so nailing a subtrack is not easy and if you are not careful you can uh, end up in a lot of failures and failures will result in a lot of bone stocks and make subsequent reconstructions very difficult and if you look at uh, what has been published before there is high incidence of malunion as well even if you kind of get to heal these fractures and if you can open reduce these fractures patients tend to do better i think open or closed if you can get a good reduction and make it heal i think that is the message so when nailing a subtrach is so difficult why should we nail why not plate it so one you have favorable biomechanics being in in the medullary canal you have much shorter lever arm that leads to much favorable loading patterns and the nail can resist medial defects and lateral wall failures much better and the implant is load sharing so that you can allow these frap patients to wait bar early and you can uh, make sure that axial micro motion helps in healing as well and obviously you can do it by using an mis technique but that does come at the expense of achieving a good reduction so malalignment in nailing after subtrack why is it so common most of the factors come down to this wrong entry point and it is quite difficult to control the proximal segment in a subtrack because of the various deforming forces that more often than not if you don't have a good reduction to start with you can get up in a wrong entry point and from there on it's all downhill so what makes nailing difficult so three factors i would just like to sum it up one is difficult reduction so why is the reduction difficult one you can see a lot of very powerful muscles kind of acting ac across those very short short proximal femur fragment you have the flexors you have the rotators and you have the abductors as well and distraction as in a isthmal fracture does not reduce your fracture and sometimes can even make your reduction much worse and like in an isthmal fracture or even some in infra isthmal fractures the nail will not reduce your fracture so if you think okay like i have a kind of a reduction can i get my nail inside and then maneuver the nail to reduce my fracture it will not because the proximal canal is much wider and also most often in subtrochs the posterior cortex is much smaller as you can see here so the nail cannot be used as a very effective reduction tool so you need to have your reduction first and unless you have your reduction you cannot get a good nail entry so you have this characteristic deformities you have flexion in the sagittal plane you have abduction and external rotation in the coronal plane and all these muscular forces need to be controlled either open or by closed means before you can initiate your nail entry and even if you get a good reduction the process of nailing as such can malalign a well reduced fracture okay so if you are not careful about your entry points or if you are not careful about the implant that you are using the kind of angle that it has and the proximal femoral anatomy that you are dealing with you can still end up in a mal reduced fracture so this again happens because of a wrong entry point because of the mismatch in the proximal femur morphology and the nail that you are using so the key is to avoid or overcome all these three challenges to achieve a good outcome and again you can face loss of reduction if you are not appreciating abnormal anatomies so if you have atypical fractures these fractures have a certain set of characteristics which make nailing really difficult so in these fractures of unless you are careful with your technique you can end up in a lot of problems and on top of this these fractures heal very very slowly nailing is the probably most preferred technique to treat these fractures but the technique can be very difficult unless you are cognizant of it So what are the tips for achieving a good reduction? First, make sure you can position the patient properly. You can use different positions. Use an appropriate table that gives you good access to fluoroscopy and maneuverability. Use good imaging. You need great imaging to do these fractures. You have to understand the different fracture patterns because you your reduction tools will change, your strategies will change. Have the appropriate tools and know the different techniques that you can use. and use an appropriate implant and position it well i'll just take you through uh, these individual steps so in positioning you can use a regular fracture table with the patient in supine position i rarely do this i do this sometimes in a uh, bilateral uh, nailing procedures but most of the times i tend to do it in uh, on a fracture table or in a lateral position 
Fracture table not necessarily with traction all the time. Traction sometimes might be helpful, but a lot of times may not be. So most of the times we may do it without any kind of traction or very minimal traction. It might just kind of like change uh, throughout the procedure. Sometimes we do do it in lateral position. I do all my revisions and atypicals in lateral position in primarily, not really all the time. Before we used to do a lot more, now with uh, advent of a lot of, or knowing a lot of uh, small percutaneous or mini invasive techniques, we do them rarely for the primary situation. But still, it's a great uh, position. It neutralizes some of the deforming forces, makes your entry point very, very accessible. So nothing wrong in that. The only challenge is fluoroscopy. So you need to have a good table. AP is not difficult. Make sure your, your pelvic pose doesn't come in the way. And these are images from a colleague of mine. So the lateral can be tricky. So make sure you position those patient well. Take the other rib so that in the, into a different position so that you can distinguish both different both femurs. And you can take the kind of oblique views to come in the, along the axis of the neck to visualize the anterior and posterior cortices of the neck when you implant your cephalic screws. So you need to know this uh, uh, fluoroscopy positions and need to kind of take proper images if you want to do successfully in lateral position. So not all, su all subtrucks are same, so they come in different patterns, so they need a different reduction strategy most of the times. And these are some of the tools that you can use to reduce your subtrucks if you want to do them closed or by mini invasive means. You can use different types of clamps. There, is a, there are a lot of clamps that you can use. You can use joysticks to maneuver your proximal fragment. You can use insert large wires very effectively in certain fracture patterns. You can use push-pull techniques as well, the hook and the spikes. So I'll just show you some examples. This is a 22-year-old male uh, with this kind of a subtrock, pretty low one. And this is what it looks like when we put him on fracture table. You can see the AP. This is not a good AP to start your nailing with. You can see it is much externally rotated. You don't see the trock as a point or in profile. And you can see the lesser trock very prominent. And on the sagittal plane as well, the deformity, you have the flexion deformity there. So this is probably the most versatile method that we use in uh, correcting the deformities in subtrock, where we use uh, artery clamp on the surface of the femur, described by Corey and colleagues. You, don't, you can use joysticks as well, but they often tend to come in the way of your nailing. So this doesn't go into the bone. You just like take advantage of the vastus and the gluteal muscle sleeve, and then make the muscles to internally rotate your proximal segment. So this is a very simple way of doing it, and this can even correct other deformities as well. So if you can look at here, now your trock looks as a point. You know where to start your entry. And on the lateral plane as well, you can see that the proximal femur is pretty much aligned with the shaft. So it, this may not be all the time, but if it, but this can be a very, very versatile tool in reducing subtrocks, a very simple artery clamp or a cocker clamp. If the lateral plane does not look great at this point, don't start your entry. Okay, make sure you correct it and then do it. So here, this is what it looks like, and then we can go ahead and reduce your fracture and get a good alignment with a simple cocker clamp. So this is another 55-year-old female, subtrock with a bo broken lateral wall. Again, like here, we have used a couple of clamps. One Weber clamp to reduce the lateral wall to the edge segment, and then a collinear clamp to get the whole thing reduced to the shaft. You can use other clamps as well. You can use another pointed clamp there. You can use hooks and spikes, a lot of other things. You can use the serrated bone clamp as well. So any clamp can do the job. So and then once we got it reduced, a couple of wires into the neck, avoiding the trajectory of the nail, and then reduce everything. And then you can go again, and then you can get a good alignment overall. So other reduction techniques includes wires or cables. These have been shown to be very effective and biological as well. You can do that by using percutaneous or by open means. Both are very acceptable as far as you can, re you can remain very biological. And uh, this is a patient like uh, with a kind of a oblique, sorry, or a long spiral subtrock, obese. We did this in lateral position in a regular table. And you can see two wires there. If you can place more than one as well as, the, as far as you can space them apart. One pattern where, where I like to use these wires would be a long spiral. I tend to avoid this in kind of comminuted fracture patterns because we have, we have faced problems with those. 
So in these patterns, it does really, really work well. Joysticks are a great as well. I don't use the joystick to control the coronal fracture displacements. Very rarely I do that because sometimes it comes in my way. I, if I have a huge sagittal plane malalignment, but good coronal plane alignment, in that case, I can use a joystick as well. I put a joystick into the lesser rock. It doesn't come in the way of my nail, doesn't hamper me in any way. That helps to control flexion. Do it on a fracture table. So once I've got everything right, and then I can go ahead and place my nail. So placement of joysticks will depend on what deforming force that you're trying to neutralize. If you're going to neutralize abduction, you put it in the mediolateral plane. If you want to neutralize flexion, then in the AP plane. So I prefer to do use joysticks for correcting the sagittal plane deformity. For the coronal plane deformity, I use other techniques. You can use this very effectively, one or two joysticks in transverse fractures and short oblique fractures. The other technique would be the push-pull technique. So you can use a hook and a spike to correct translation, or you can do that by using a collinear clamp as well if you have a favorable reduction vector. So if you look at this patient, for example, uh, kind of an oblique or a spiral with a, some, some, some kind of comminution, and my artery clamp was able to reduce my sagittal plane deformity and then a collinear clamp to get everything together before I start my entry. So, and finally, again, like we can get a good alignment in both planes. Finally, sometimes you might require an open reduction. Okay, so don't hesitate. So in my hands, transverse fractures are the one which most often require an open reduction because it's quite difficult to control them. And this will often require a very small incision. Two serrated clamps, hold them reduced, and then you can go ahead and nail it. So the last thing that you need to know is laws of reduction. Okay, so even if you have reduced by whatever means I told you, you can still lose your reduction when you start nailing the fracture. So if you don't get your good nail trajectory for whatever reasons, you can still face problems. So whenever you nail subtrox in a supine position, you face problem because of gluteal muscles causing iliac or suprailiac impingements. You have to be careful about that. A couple of tips would be to, if you're doing it in supine, make sure you drape above the ASIS, flex the hip so that your entry will go a little bit posterior, get a much higher skin incision so that you can get in line with the femur or do it lateral for whatever reasons I already told you before. And the second thing is avoid lateral deflection of the nail. So a lot of times your entry may be right, but because of a very strong medial bone, you will start coring out your lateral bone, and then that will cause a wedge effect, causing again a varus deformity. This again has to be avoided. So be again aware of that. Push your nail to remove more medial bone. There are a lot of ways to do it, and once you do that, then you will get a great uh, alignment and trajectory. And another way to do is to go retrograde. So we described this some time ago, like uh, you can always create a retrograde entry portal without reducing your fracture. And once you have got everything, uh, 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 once you pass your guide wire, then you can reduce it and then pass your nail from above. These we use in atypical fractures and revision situations. For uh, again, like it helps you to get a great entry point and uh, absolutely brilliant nail trajectory. This is not something new. We always used to do it in femoral shaft fractures before, so you can do it here as well. So when you do atypical fractures, these are the things that you need to remember. So we tend to do it in lateral position. I prefer a retrograde entry portal so that I can get a more medialized entry point because in subtrox with atypical features, you need a more medialized entry point so that you can create a mismatch and create valgus. In the sagittal, it will be slightly anterior to midline. I selectively thin down the lateral cortex. I can do, if I can do that by anti-grade means by using a medial blocking screw, it's great. Or else I use an open approach and use a bar or a reamer to ream it out. So this is an example of how we would do it. You can see a retrograde entry. And then when the nail goes in, again, you can see in the D image, my shaft kind of, my proximal fragment again drifts into virus. So I take it again, a medial couple of blocking pins, now the main nail is more lateralized. I can either put a blocking screw. In this case, I just add a medial, sorry, lateral plate and then remove the blocking screw. So to avoid failures in nailing a subtrock, you need to remember that you need to achieve a great fracture reduction, open or closed or percutaneous or minimally invasive. As long as you can do it biologically, it's great. Get a good nail entry and avoid loss of reduction. Thank you.